So I'm in the middle of a project and I just came across a problem. I am building a cabinet using this walnut plywood and everything's already cut to size and like dados are routed and everything. And I was originally going to assemble all the corners using miters, which would be totally fine. But then I had a change of heart in the design. I decided that I wanted to add really big roundovers to all the corners, which I think could look really cool. But if I did that on this plywood after mitering it, you would see the exposed plywood in the corners, which could look cool, just not for this project. So I have to figure out a way to hide that plywood um, on those corners. So if I would have thought of this roundover idea before buying my material, I probably would have just bought a lesser grade plywood and then did the miters and then the big roundover and then veneered on top of that. But we're here now and I have to figure out how to make this work with what I already have going on here. So I think I thought of something that uh, in my head seems like it's going to work. So let's figure it out. This is a 5 8 inch roundover bit that I'm going to use. It's a pretty big roundover as you can see from this test piece over here. And what I did on this side is I raised the bit higher than what you normally do when you do roundover, leaving that little lip there so that I could take my combo square and measured to see if it's actually 5 8 and it was. So I took some walnut stock and ripped them to be a little bit bigger than 5 8 inch wide. And then I flipped the pieces onto the other side to make them 5 8 inch square. I also did some extra pieces here just because uh, you never know what's gonna happen. Something might get messed up. So I just always make sure to mill up some extra pieces as I'm doing it. And I also was not sure if I wanted to do a matching color or a contrasting color. So I milled up some lighter pieces as well. So I cut these pieces to slightly bigger than 5 8 just to give me some wiggle room in both directions. So I'm just gonna line this up on the ply, make some marks. Actually, I'll do some test cuts on some scrap. I'm going to put a tiny little chamfer on the inside of all of these pieces and that's going to help bring all the pieces together and make up the difference from this edge piece. I'll just keep lowering the bit until I get to the correct depth that I want. The router is now set based off of the scrap that I used and now I can just add that teeny tiny little chamfer on the inside corners of all of these pieces. Now I have a quarter inch slot cutting bit at the router table and a scrap piece of poplar that I milled to the same dimensions as all those other pieces. And I'll sneak up on the fit I wanna get in the center of all these pieces. I'll just keep making passes on this scrap until I get to the location that I want. Now I'm not going to change anything with the setup at the router table yet, and I'm going to do a test cut on that piece of plywood that I already made that test chamfer on. Um, the only thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to push the fence um, back a little bit just to cut a little bit deeper into the plywood, but I'm gonna keep the height the same. All right, so here's a spline that I just roughly cut fits really nicely in the groove and the plywood that I just cut. All right, so what I have here is that the plywood and the hardwood are perfectly flush with each other, which is pretty good. But what I actually want to do is I actually want to make the hardwood just a little bit proud of the plywood just to give me some wiggle room so that I could clean up the hardwood um, at, in case there's any inconsistencies. And if this is perfectly flush and then I need to sand or fix something, I might have to sand away the veneer of the plywood and that's no good. So I'm going to take that, um, uh, that router bit and I'm going to raise it a little bit so that the groove in the plywood is slightly higher 
and that way the um, hardwood is going to sit just slightly above the plywood. So I just adjusted the bit and that's what I'm going for. A very, very slight reveal. So I'll be able to clean up that hardwood just in case there's any inconsistencies. Before moving on, I just wanna do a test fit just to see if I wanna do the walnut, which is matching, or do the lighter color, which would be a contrast. So first I'll try the walnut just to see how that looks. Okay, so that fits really nicely and I think it looks pretty good. So I know it's definitely not fooling anybody. It does not look like it's continuing all around. It definitely looks like a filler piece. Um, so that's why I wanted to try out a lighter piece to see maybe if I would just go with the fact that it's a filler piece and do a contrasting wood. So let's try that out now. Okay, hmm. So I like it, but not for this project. I think that maybe for this project, this is going to be too busy. I have stuff going on on the doors of this whole thing. Hmm. Um, I like that it's showcasing that I'm using a filler piece. Like I'm not trying to fool anybody here and it's going, it's like a cool accent piece, but just not for this specific project. I'm going to go with the walnut. All the pieces are ready to be glued up now. And I did a dry fit trying to put everything all together at once. And that was a complete disaster. So I decided that I'm going to break it down into sections. So first I'll just glue the filler pieces with the splines onto the side panels. And then I'll take those, the, the side panels after the glue dries, and then I'll attach it to the top and bottom. And hopefully breaking it down like this is going to make this glue up just go a little bit easier. Just put everything into place first. I left everything oversized and I'll trim that all up after. The one important thing that I need to be aware of during this glue up is that the, uh, the grooves in all the pieces are facing in the correct direction. So that direction is in towards the case. So on the side of the, where I drilled all these holes for the shelves, you guys didn't see me do that, but um, all of those little details are going to be in the full build video for this project. I should also mention that when I cut these splines, I made them slightly narrower than um, the, the gap between the, the two grooves. That way there's just a little bit of room for glue in there. So this is why when I was making the grooves in the hardwood and the plywood, I offset it so that the hardwood was sitting slightly above the plywood. So you see over here, my nail is catching on the hardwood edging, which is how I set it. I actually wanted it to be raised a little bit because over here on this end, it's completely flush and my nail isn't catching on the hardwood at all. So if I would have tried to aim for perfection, and tried to like line up the hardwood completely flush with the plywood, this little part over here would probably be lowered down and sitting below the plywood, which means I would have to sand at the, uh, the veneer and that might expose some of the plywood in, <laughs> inside and that's no good. So when I'm doing stuff like this, I try to just assume that there's going to be some sort of inconsistency in either material. And I try to um, think beforehand of how I should prepare the pieces so that I can just clean them up afterwards and then make it perfect after it's all together. And also in this corner right here is why I made that little tiny little chamfer on the inside corners 
of the plywood pieces. It's to make up the difference of the thickness from the hardwood edging and the actual plywood. Now, I know a lot of people are probably going to ask, why didn't I just make the hardwood the same thickness as the plywood and then I wouldn't have to make that chamfer? And that's an excellent point. <laughs> so um, you could totally do that. But I really wanted to try to make the roundover start exactly where the hardwood is going to start. So this is all just an experiment. I'm gonna do a mock-up, a test piece where it's the same thickness and see what that looks like also. Probably should have done that before <laughs> gluing everything all up, but here we are. Before I add the roundover on the edge here and see what it all looks like, I'm going to put on this molding piece. I'll show how I made this in the full build video, but basically this is going to help continue the curve that's gonna go on the inside of the cabinet. I'll glue this into place, and then when I put the edge banding on top of everything, I'll use the flush trim bit, and there's going to be an outer curve and an inner curve to this whole case. Before adding the big round over to my actual project, I glued up a test piece for where the filler piece was exactly the same thickness as the plywood. Actually, it was slightly bigger and now I just uh, trimmed it down so that um, it's nice and flush over here, but from the inside to the outside, it's all even. And I did the same joinery as well. And because I know that a lot of people aren't really so interested in adding huge 5 8 roundovers to all their projects, I wanted to see if this had a wider application on smaller roundovers, like something like a quarter inch. So I glued up um, just these this test miter right here. Miters is something that is a little bit difficult to get clean, especially on plywood. So I'm thinking that maybe this could be a really great way to like, cover up how bad your miters are. So um, this glue up wasn't the best, wasn't the worst, whatever. I wasn't really paying too much attention to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a rabbiting bit and I'm going to make a quarter inch rabbit um, in, the, in the end of this. And then I'll glue in the filler piece after it was already glued up. And then I'll add a quarter inch round over to that and see how that works. I think that this is also going to add strength to a miter. So um, maybe I'll jump on these pieces and test them after I glue them up. Okay, so obviously for a real project, I would be aware of that situation. Oops. All right, finally, I'm gonna to get to test the 5 8 roundover on these pieces. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit at a time so that um, the router's not taking off too much material. So that looks really good. I'm really happy with how that looks. But if you look closely, I'm not sure if this comes up on camera, there's like a flat here before it gets round on both sides. That's because this piece is the exact thickness as this plywood, um, so that's closer to three quarters and that's more than five eighths, which was that round over bit. So not this whole piece over here doesn't get rounded over. I'm sure that could be fixed with some sanding and everything to make it look like a smoother transition, but I'm gonna go test out this bit on my actual project now. Just a quick sand to see what this is all gonna look like. I think this looks really awesome and I'm super happy with the results. Compared to the test piece with the thicker filler strip, 
the difference is really negligible. So if I would have just used a filler piece that was the same thickness as the plywood, and I didn't have to add in that inner chamfer in the corners, it would have turned out really cool. But when I see these two together, this one looks a little bit chunkier to me than this one. And it's that really just small little difference that I'm happy that I went that extra mile and added the inner chamfer to get the less material in the corner here. So I'm really happy that I did that, but it's totally not necessary to do this whole technique because this piece looks pretty cool too. Um, now I'm going to, to test out that quarter inch roundover on that other test piece. I think that looks pretty cool. Now let's just get a better idea of what these are gonna look like with uh, mineral spirits. Okay, try to ignore that tear out situation. Look at it from this side. I think that looks really cool. That looks awesome. Now let's see how strong they are. Wow, I'm really happy that I tested that out. So adding a small filler strip to the corner of a miter does not strengthen it. So if you want to add a round over, a small round over to a mitered corner, I highly suggest you adding something else to strengthen that miter. Lots of different ways to do that. The way that I did it with the splines, I think is plenty strong enough. I stomped on this just as hard as I stomped on the one that broke. And I think this is going to be plenty strong for my project. I think that this is turning out really cool so far and I can't wait to show this build to you guys. Not only does this add strength and it looks really cool, it's also going to be more durable. So like plywood corners are really susceptible to damage, especially with miters. So adding this hardwood strip here is really going to make this piece super durable. My kids are not going to be able to mess up this project. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to Woodcraft for sponsoring this video and I'll see you on the next one, which is going to be this build.